All right, recording has started. Want to let everybody know, it seems like a lot of people stayed from the prior talks, but anybody new, if you have any questions for Robert at any time, please drop them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen, and he will be able to see those questions during Q&A time. And uh, we're going to do Q&A, since this session goes until 1.10, do Q&A at around about uh, 1 o'clock. So, Robert, it is my privilege to introduce you today. Um, so, Robert, you know, you design and you develop um, application integration solutions, both on-prem and in the cloud. Um, traditionally, the solutions were based on the Oracle middleware stack, but lately you're advising solutions that use a more cloud native or hybrid approach. Um, besides application integration development, you're an advocate on blockchain, IoT, and microservices. You're heavily involved in the developer community you are an international speaker at many conferences. You're the author of two books. You're a blogger and you participate in tech related podcasts. Um, and for all of this amazing work that you've been doing in the community, you were awarded the developer champion title in 2017, which was renewed from 2018 to Oracle groundbreaker ambassador. So you are doing big things, doing amazing work. So Robert, with that, I'm gonna mute myself and I'm gonna hand it over to you. No, thank you. Thank you for thank this you. nice introduction. Yeah. yeah. Welcome everybody for this uh, last session. Uh, um, yeah, for today. Um, so, uh, um, in this last talk, um, I will go over, yeah, around 10 reasons to choose Apache uh, Pulsar over Kafka and specifically on the topic of uh, event sourcing and uh, uh, CQRS. And uh, let's go. So yeah, um, you can follow me on LinkedIn or on Twitter if you want. Um, there's also a reference to the two books I wrote. Uh, one is really on on right uh, on an uh, integration uh, uh, platform, and the other one is on blockchain. Um, but for this talk, um, I want to first go over uh, a little bit about concepts about from uh, uh, what is, uh, about event sourcing and CQRS. Um, then I, uh, take a look at some common problems with Kafka-based projects. And how that relates to uh, like uh, yeah uh, event sourcing uh, so, um, then a small introduction now of everybody that we here know about Pulsar uh, that's what I, I one thing I uh, I think with all the many presentation we had today um, I don't have to go over a lot and then we look at uh, the reasons um, why I think uh, that Pulsar should be your pick if you are uh, Certainly, I uh, want to implement uh, these two concepts and uh, certainly the CQRS uh, pattern. So first, let's uh, let's look at what those two um, are, right? What's uh, event sourcing and what we mean with CQRS. So if you look at this uh, this picture, this is a picture of uh, of an event driven architecture, and what we see is that. It doesn't matter what device you have, eh? if we have a laptop or a mobile device, when we communicate with a web application and we do a change on maybe on some information or we, 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 uh, or we, uh, we, we, yeah, we do um, with what can lead to a state change of a certain data object. This, this ob only this um, state change is published by an event eh? uh, and uh, uh, publish once, subscribe by many, right? So if it goes to the backend or a monitoring app or the search app or any, uh, maybe a data store for 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 uh, for cold storage or later for uh, to use. Um, and uh, this is like if we look at event sourcing, right? I think with now what you see maybe today, this 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 um, concept should should be familiar with you. Um, so event sourcing uses like any event centric approach to persist uh, these business object states. And um, yeah, this business object is persisting by storing it in a sequence of state changing events. So instead of 
having uh, like a, a constant, maybe uh, an, an updated object that we send. So we only send the, the uh, we only send the changes. And to be able to to get the the latest state, we need to uh, uh, process all these uh, state changes. And uh, whenever a state uh, change, uh, that new event is appended to the sequence, uh, and and yeah, and we need to, of course then repeat all the events to get the current state. Um, but for any consumer, any application that uh, that that uh, uses the, the data and the end date, um, all these events should be sufficient to reconstruct the the final object state. So if we then look at CQRS, CQRS stands for Command and Query Responsibility Segregation. This means that all the write interfaces and the read interfaces are yeah, really separated from each other. The responsibility, uh, yeah, is, um, they have their own responsibility. So where we have our write interface, uh, it goes to the event queue, which leads eventually to the storage on the event store. And there we can process the data through event handlers. Um, and the event handlers, um, they, they can store uh, maybe a different, a different view, a different way in the application state. And from there on, you have the interfaces uh, to, to read that state. Um, if we then look at uh, the pattern itself, so what I said is that um, if you develop this pattern in the software, um, you, um, you really separate the writing and the reading of the data objects and the responsibility of that. So the bits of the system that are responsible for changing the system state uh, are physically separated from the, the, the bits of the system that manages the views. Uh, and if you would compare that to a traditional CRUD architecture, uh, uh, then this is implemented by the same components. That can be like a microservice uh, that, um, yeah, that, that has multiple operations. It can even maybe be a database package uh, that has, 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 has uh, or, or any interface with, uh, with read and write operations. And there it has the, uh, both responsibilities to read and also to write the state changes. So why we, uh, yeah, we use event sourcing and certainly CQRS, why it's a good pattern. Uh, is because uh, in this way we can um, we can uh, have better scalability. And certainly, if we look at why we go for Pulsar instead of Kafka, this is one of important things: scalability with QRS. Uh, so the read side is separate from the write side, so uh, each can be scaled separately from each other, and that's why we can optimize uh, the performance in, uh, independently. Uh, there, in, in other cases, that we can simplify uh, the, the, the way we write uh, the data and we read the data. They can be separate uh, data models, right? A command can be much simpler than the view, the read logic that we have. Um, it's also more flexible. So because we have clear separation of the methods, we can also easily change things. If we change the commands, then we can still go to the same materialized view, or if we have new commands, we just have to uh, add. And we, we maybe it's, it's and we can add a different view, or or uh, maybe separate or change the view, um, uh, separate from each other. Then, right? It's it. You can change the commands first, and then the views, for example, or, or vice versa. And with this, we can also mostly uh, focus on the business side. So if, uh, so if we want to make um, something more, um, uh, yeah, applications are more responsive and more um, uh, yeah, easily adjustable um, if there's a change. The change is also cheaper if we separate the, <clears throat> the commands that's coming in from the queries. Um, Uh, and why, uh, in this case, um, Pulsar would be a better, better, better solution, a better choice. So 
maybe some of you people have seen this picture maybe today before or maybe you will see it tomorrow it's a well, it's a very i think for this one if you search on the the, the differences is a very famous picture from, from um it's a it's, it's from october 2018 already so it's a so almost uh yeah it's one and a half years old maybe almost two years old so and the main problem is with with kafka scaling and uh, if you want to add a, uh, a, a maybe a, a new broker in your cluster or add it something like that, it 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 is there. But before you can use it, always the data needs to be rebalanced and needs to be synchronized between um, the brokers and the state. Uh, we see that in a moment why that is. But in this case, uh, Kafka uses uh, distributed logs where um, uh, uh, Pulsar uses a more distributed ledger where if you want to use like the new and uh, the new boat if it's there uh, it needs to be synchronized fully before it can really participate so if you have a lot of events coming in and you see that the, the load is high you need to be able to scale and if you go to another parallel universe here um, you see that when if you do that with pulsar and you add a new broker or you add something in, in a new cluster or a totally different location then once it is ready and starting it's it's already directly participating so instead of saying oh we're doomed right with uh, with with kafka uh we can um uh, uh, production will just continue working if you use Pulsar. Uh, so let's break that down more, right? So if you use Kafka, scaling is really difficult. And that's the way Kafka stores data within the broker. So the broker is stateful and it uses distributed logs. So a log can be very big and grow over time because it's like it uses for the, the, mess, the, the whole persistent storage. Um, one thing is that if you if a log starts to be grow and grow you all sometimes you want to partition things or um, say okay this partition is maybe one gigabyte big or two 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 gigabyte big or and it's a little bit of how you yeah how you size your your log your logs how how, how big they you want to, to have them uh, but if you want to partition them and make them, or if you want to change the partition size, that can take time. Certainly if you have a lot of uh, messages in the logs and also maybe the amount of brokers, uh, it can mess up the message order because it takes a lot. Yeah, uh, the synchronization can take a long time, but also um, uh, if there are still coming a lot of events in uh, and um, uh, through, um, yeah, then, um, the, yeah, it can get delayed, uh, delays, or one broker receives the messages in a different order than the other one. And if we look at CQRS and the way you need to rebuild your uh, state, it's that's it's really important that that doesn't happen, that we don't miss any message, or that the message order stays the same. If we get yeah. Or, updates if it can mess up uh, if it can mess up the end state of the data uh, so we able to not have that with kafka we need to plan and calculate uh, the number of brokers maybe the number of topics the, the partition the sizes and also how we want to do that to avoid the scaling uh, problems so i'm working at a customer that now has um, 70 million events per year but next year and the, or in one two years the planning is to go to one billion messages so if we would have used kafka in this place then we we would already need to have the brokers and the partitions already in place to handle the one billion messages to avoid this problem uh, same goes for if you have multiple clusters, you want to rebalance that, it just has impact on the performance. And then it has impact on the producers and also the consumers. Um, if we look at development side, because um, that's also uh, uh, 
20, 25% of my, my daily job is still on the development side. We have no native authorization on the events and commands that's coming in. Uh, and that's really important that you don't send like uh, yeah, unknown commands, right? And uh, we also don't, have, with Kafka, we don't have like a native event analyzer. Yeah, we have a, 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 a Kafka streams, but that's very limited. You can uh, slide over some information, some data. You can uh, that that you 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 batch some some events and do some processing on that. But if you really want to do action-based things, uh, we need to already go to Apache Spark or or Heron. Um, then Kafka, if you want to do geolocation, it's also problematic. If you just have two data centers, maybe it's the latency between, you have the same problem about when it's delivered, and maybe, um, yeah, you can get a complete loss of data because the, the order is like messed up. So let's switch over a little bit to Pulsar then. Eh? And why uh, would I, for this situation, eh, certainly from 70 million to 1 billion, um, events, why is maybe for this case pills are a better option. So two things, I think this is some slide I just go quickly over. Uh, I think most people, you all know these things. This is, um, yeah, if you, you, uh, if you do pills, sorry, you know these things and, and know this. Uh, uh, both uh, Pulsar has both the high performance streaming. So what also uh, Apache Kafka pursues and we have the flexible queuing mechanism where we can do policies or we can uh, say who can read, who can write, what kind of validations we want on, for example, the message or we want to process things when the message comes in. And using a, and a unified message model and API, so it doesn't matter if it's a persistent queue or it's a topic, we, use, we can use the same API. Um, yeah, the other things, right? We see differences. Um, uh, I want to go over these. Like most things, Kafka do just doesn't have. Um, and I want to go over some of these. Um, so, what? Uh, Pulsar has the has the uh, the the, uh, the data replication and syncing to disk to not the broker but to bookkeeper. So that's why it, it can be uh, it's durable. Eh? You can. The events can come in without uh, yeah, breaking this, yeah, the syncing of the data. Um, interesting other things where I want to be more focused on is the tiered storage and why that is important for CQRS, uh, the warm and the hot cold parts. Uh, Pulse of functions, I want to address that one, certainly if we are processing information, so uh, very lightweight compute. Um, we can do the, the uh, yeah, uh, things like the scalability uh, and um, the throughput on, on, the, on the partitions. We can do 1.8 million messages uh, on a single partition. So, and it's easy to add a partition uh, without having to wait on the sync, yeah, the sync or changing partition size. Um, so, uh, with the 10 reasons, uh, I have mm, most of them very clearly worked out. Uh, some of uh, are more uh, generic, so uh, we can go over them already. Some of them already uh, uh, talked about, so uh, then we have some, some time also for, for, for more in-depth uh, questions if they are there, or uh, maybe a small demo, I have also something there. So. Let's first go to the, the first one and eh? why I think that in this case Pulsar is, is, better, is better for the job than Kafka. So if we look at the first thing and the main thing is streaming and queuing come together. So Kafka is only a infinite streaming platform and uh, it is very good in that. It, it's, it's, don't think about any less of something like that. Kafka is really good in it. We use it in multiple customers. Uh, 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 so, so, um, uh, but it implements only the concepts of topics. Uh, the pub system, we have the permanent storage. We can do process of event streams with Kafka 
uh, uh, streams, but if we want to do uh, multiple things, uh, we need a, a stream processing en engine uh, separate from that. We can still do a message validation using Avro. Uh, so we have it there, um, yeah, based on distributed commit logs and still capable of handling a lot of events by <laughs> day. Uh, but if we compare it with Pulsar and uh, what we get out of the box, right, is that we, we see that uh, it started as the meshing que queuing platform and additionally we have the high, uh, the, the, the high rate real time event so uh, sourcing use cases because it's the same functionality we, uh, Kafka also provides. Uh, it implements concepts of the, of, of the topics, right, the pub sub, but instead of having like permanent storage, we also have distributed and cold storage. We can do event processing out of the box and we have multiple message validation schemas. Also includes Avro, so if you go from Kafka to Pulsar, you can still use the same schemas, but also JSON and, and some other things are going more detail later. Uh, with that, we can also do like, um, uh, uh, we have uh, the uh, queuing patterns. Kafka doesn't have that, so uh, you can uh, play a little bit with competing consumers. Um, you can uh, also do fill over subscriptions. You can say, okay, this message go to multiple consumers. That can be possible. With Kafka, that's not, not really a thing. Um, and when you have, uh, you can have separations with consumer and consumer groups, but you don't have the, 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 the advanced, more advanced um, subscription based um, uh, uh, message patterns. And it uses a distributed ledger or it uses the log segments. So instead of copying over a company, the, uh, the, the log file, if you, you, you want to expand, um, it's, um, it's using the log segments. So if we go continue on that, eh, the log versus the distributed ledger. So Kafka uh, logs are uh, append only and they are sequential. So the data can be written to and be extracted from the logs very quickly. And that's a plus for Kafka, right? And that's, that's why Kafka makes it also good. But they are simple logs. And you can get into trouble when they get large. Not only in storage, what I mentioned on the scale up and scale out and the replication. So if we go back to the concept of, of event sourcing in CQRS, it's important to distribute events quickly to all consumers, even when the loads get high. We don't want the problem of, 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 of timeouts or that, that some consumers take, take events quicker than the others. And with Pulsar, yeah, Pulsar avoids this problem. Instead of copying all the, uh, the large logs, right, it's breaking down the logs into segments. And it distributes those segments across the multiple servers while uh, it's being written down right to Bookkeeper to, for the storage layer. Uh, and you see that here in a little bit in the architecture, right, is that um, if a producer sends a message to a broker, then the, se the, s on, on the segments are, uh, are, are, are coming in, the messages that are coming in are uh, placed into segments. And this is something you can compare also a little bit with blockchain. So it's, uh, we have a distributed ledger, every block uh, has transactions here we have also the ledger has segments and we have the messages there so uh, really the, the similar concept so if you understand the concepts of uh, how this works you also uh, easily should have could um, understand the blockchain uh, and you see here that we have uh, like um, a lot uh, multiple bookies also in bookkeeper and you see that not all segments are written to the same uh, bookie but eventually uh, you get the segments or, uh, um, uh, yeah, synchronized. Um, uh, yeah. So, but we still have the things on, on the bookie, right? So all the segments, it's still, it's still growing and growing, right? On, on, a, on your storage in the bookkeeper. And another thing that, if we, we check for, for a plus for event sourcing is the tiered storage. And for event sourcing, it's important to be able to replay the messages, right? So if my application uh, is, is, is broken, something happened, we can unexpected ex exception, 
we maybe want to do a built and destroy me mechanism. So we, we remove it and we replay everything from the beginning. Um, and, uh, 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 or there's a new application, right? A new consumer and it replays the messages. So, but keeping all the messages forever on the same storage, yeah, it sounds great for that, right? Ah, ah, we, we put something there, ah, ah, we can read all the messages. The only problem with Kafka is, is that it's bigger, right? It's one log file, it's, it's very uh, uh, over, it, it, it's always stored in the broker. So with Pulsar, um, I would also suggest always to have some kind of tiered storage policy there, which where we can put automatically push old messages there. Maybe we say everything older than two weeks, we, we put it in a cold storage. Uh, and uh, that can be, uh, um, yeah, the cloud storage, right? Or, or maybe on, on a network storage somewhere if you, if you run it on premise. Uh, and with that, we can still retrieve them just like those newer fresh messages. And that comes because we have like the, the unified API. So the consumer doesn't see that it's in the story, in the cold storage. But you see here, we have the, the topic log, right? We have already five segments. And maybe uh, segment zero and segment one are not. Nah, uh, uh, it's all, all ordered than the, the time we set on the policy. And then it, we can offload it to just tiered storage. And this is a plus for event sourcing or secure as if a new tenant comes, a new bookkeeper comes, it can easily sync the data from the cold storage and then consume the new messages that are coming in through the same API without any difference. So for that, it's, it, it doesn't matter. Um, um, still on the, on the topic of a little bit about that, that, that storage, right? If we look then, um, the main difference with Kafka and also with Pulsar is like we have a stateful versus a stateless broker. So Kafka is a stateful broker. So every broker contains the complete log for each of the partitions in the ideal world. If the broker fails and, um, and it's, it's not synced, the data, the logs are not completely synced with another broker, um, then that broker can't take over the work. Only brokers can, can take over the work that are in the same, the same sync level as, as, as the other one. Um, so in this case, brokers must synchronize the state from other brokers uh, or the replicas uh, of this partition to really be up to date. So it can't be uh, before they, 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 can, they can really take over the same work as the other brokers. So that takes time. So it's not immediately that, 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 that it, it, it production events um, can, can, can continue to be sent to the con consumer. Um, in this case, eh, Pulsar doesn't use this concept. Pulsar uses stateful brokers, straight stateless brokers. So Pulsar holds the data because we, we have seen that already in the storage layer, but just not in the broker, right? Uh, the broker only accepts the data and sends the data. So uh, the data is separately stored in, in, in Bookkeeper. Uh, in this case, and the broker can be more seen for low balancing. So for the sounds, uh, guys, if you hear thunderstorm, it's we're getting a little bit of uh, uh, very uh, stormy weather now in the Netherlands. Um, if you, you if the if the load gets high, uh, then we can easily put on a new broker because the broker doesn't hold the state that's in the bookkeeper. So we can easily add brokers and divide the load immediately. So in this case, if we go from 70 million to 1 billion uh, messages during the period, we can easily scale up uh, if we just yeah, get some, some metrics and logging and all those things on, on, on the amount of messages and, and the, the, yeah, the, 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 maybe the JVM size, the memory, CPU, all those things. Uh, yeah, this is... Um, uh, a picture that it comes from Xeon Stack, and they have also a very good uh, blog about uh, about um, about Pulsar. 
you see there this is like the broker itself and with this is a plus for event sourcing CRS because we can always guarantee that the data is available to the consumer in real time. Uh, if the high, uh, the, the, if a broker goes down, we can easily put a new one next to it. Or if, the, uh, if we need more throughput, we can put a new broker uh, uh, next to it. Um, yeah. One other thing that's more development um, uh, uh, related with it and based on, on Securus is that we can, we have a schema registry. We can do message validation. So for Securus, it's important that, that a client um, or producer only send known commands that, or that we can also validate. And Kafka only supports message validation using Avlo schema. And in addition to that, uh, if you want to do it correctly, you need to encode and decode that Afro schema, that Afro message in your code. So uh, in Pulsar, uh, we have more type safety, and uh, and within both the the, the the in the communication between the producer and the consumer, and for this um, uh, uh, for this safety messaging in Pulsar, you have both client side and server side. You have schema message validation. And how it works a little bit is that, and if we use Pulsar Schema, uh, we, uh, it, it's, it is applied and enforced on a topic level. And producers and consumers can upload the schemas um, uh, uh, and they can do that. But if you do that, you need to conform to uh, uh, some rules. Uh, if you do make, create um, this, these schemas for the registry, uh, you need to create a Pulsar schema, so it just holds, as you see, it's a JSON message, it holds a name, it holds the type, the binary representation of the schema, and it can hold uh, user-defined metadata properties in, in, a, in, a, in a string stream uh, uh, key value map. And what is different with Kafka is, is that not only we have Avlo schema, but we can also do JSON schema, Protobuf, which is from Google, uh, so they have a lot of libraries about protocol buffers you can you can can also use if it's an industry standard uh, uh, protocols. Uh, and we can use strings, like um, uh, uh, if you want to do uh, encoded lines in a certain pattern or a certain way they need to look like. And if you don't de uh, define it, we always have the rule bytes. Let's go over. Um, when we, um, so we, we can do the schema validation, right? And it's a plus for, uh, for, uh, event sourcing CQRS is, or more to CQRS is because we only have then the messages that we, we want, huh? we can cancel out any messages that don't, um, yeah, are from that schema, right? Um, then if we, uh, want to, uh, there's another thing for event sourcing and is, uh, or CQRS is that sometimes we need to perform simple computations before we send the message to the consumer. And if we want to use, uh, do that with Kafka, we need, um, in most cases, if we do advanced things, is an extra streaming processing engine. Um, Kafka streams can do simple things that's uh, uh, in addition, but if you want the real things, you need to have uh, Apache Storm or Spark next to it to do those things. Um, uh, in Pulsar, we can do it a little bit different. We can write functions in Java and Python, and we can deploy them to a cluster. And we do that without um, yeah, the need to yeah, run a separate stream processing engine. The functions are still lightweight. They are lightweight compute processes. If you uh, think about serverless functions, if you hear that term, I, I, uh, these functions, I, yeah, for me, it's the same thing. It's really relatable. I explain them the same way. Is that, uh, and they are executed each time a message is published on a, a specific input topic. If we look at them more detail, right? We have a lightweight compute uh, process that, and uh, what I said is they e executed each time a message is published. So you see, we have a publish uh, pulsar function. This you can apply this um, on multiple topics, so you can reuse it. For example, the, the function. And um, we have our specific logic. 
and then we uh, the, the output we can write to even one or more topics. Um, so if you look at the plus for, 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 for event sourcing and CQRS is that this common logic that we have on event messages, we can use this for all tenancies and all and maybe multiple topics, multiple clusters, maybe in the geo application and, and, and all those things without redundant programming. Um, maybe compare like the schema validation with smart contract rules and pulsar functions with smart contract logic. And there's a reason why I say that. So these functions can be written in both Java and Python in two ways. You can use the native language interface, and then you don't need any Pulsar specific libraries in if you do it uh, in your code or special dependencies. Uh, it, yeah, you can do that out of the box using, uh, for example, here the example on to, to write from Java. It uh, implements the, the, the yeah in the in the in the, the, the function class here, uh, but I prefer using still the Pulsar functions SDK, and this uh, leverage yeah the specific libraries from Pulsar, and with this it provides a range of functionalities that are not available to the native interfaces, and that is state management. So within the context object, we can relate to already data that we have so if something comes in and maybe it's interesting okay i have a message that is valid through the schema but is it also valid action that we can do based on the data that we already have it's a little bit what i said is we have to the, 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 the smart contract smart, not a smart contract but more smart asset functionality and then we have some other reasons. I think a little bit of concluding. I see it's time already. Um, but yeah. Robert, take, um, take your time. If you want to yeah, talk a couple more minutes, because people are yeah. very engaged. I'm getting a lot of questions coming in. So like, if folks want to hang out a little bit longer, take your time. Go ahead. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, for this, uh, for this is a uh, few minutes. Okay. So we, we already seen some other concepts. And uh, because of timing, and I left them a little bit out, but the slides itself, it's that there's a difference between the concepts of Kafka and Pulsar. The first one is that, so Kafka is, you have a producer, you have a topic, you have a consumer, maybe a consumer group between those two. Where in Pulsar we have the concept also of subscriptions. So if you have a topic, you can say, right, uh, uh, if uh, we have one, the multiple consumers that, that listen to this topic, but if one consumer, maybe only, the messages are first going to consumer one. And if consumer one is not there, we have like a fill over subscription, right? It goes to consumer two. Uh, or we have a combination that like a shared subscription that multiple consumers can take up the message. And uh, even if then something doesn't work, we can still do a fill over. Um, so where Kafka is more focused on the streaming and exclusive messaging on partitions, there's no shared consumption uh, with pulsar we have we see the different right we have the unified message model uh, for uh, event topics versus the queuing patterns where we can do the streaming to exclusive but also fill over subscriptions because that's more functionality of yeah queues not not something of uh, topics um, um, now, there are some other differences with how acknowledgements happen. In, with, with Pulsar, because you have the subscriptions and you need to, for example, you can put in, okay, I have two consumers or three consumers, let's say three consumers, and at least two consumers need to do the acknowledge before something is like before the state is really confirmed. Yeah, and then maybe the, 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 the the event is, is it's really stored to, to the background and that's not available to new consumers anymore. Um, there's also a difference in, with retention of messages. So in Kafka, we have we, uh, met a mess, the deleted on based on retention time. Uh, so if there's no consumer, the still the, the message is, is deleted in that retention period. 
and you will lose data. And certainly with CQS, we don't want to do that because if we lose data, we can't rebuild the object state. So in Pulsar, uh, there's a, a, yeah, messages are only deleted when the subscription, uh, yeah, say that, ah, okay, it's consumed by all subscriptions. So yeah, on the topic, you can even have multiple subscriptions. So the message is only deleted if all the subscriptions skip say, ah, acknowledge. So in this case, we don't have data loss, even if there's no consumers or the subscriptions are down for a long time. So uh, yeah, you can keep uh, like the messages on the retention time even. Um, you can also keep messages longer uh, with the retention time than, than if they are already consumed, right? Normally they are consumed, a message is deleted. But if you set the retention time of, for example, a year, I don't know why you do that, but it's a, then, and somebody picks it up, all the consumers picks it up in a day or an hour, or hopefully in, in, this, in some seconds, it can still be there for, new, for maybe new consumers or new cons subscriptions to, to consume them, right? And the last one is in Kafka, we don't have any time to live support. So uh, for example, if we have like very privacy related data, and uh, we want to say, okay, this data is only available for, I don't know, an hour, 24 hours or something like that. We can't do that with Kafka. Uh, you have a retention uh, period, of course, you can, can do that with, but uh, there's no any time to live here. And, and, and with Pulsar, we, can, we have that extra, extra step to, to, to set that. Uh, if it's yeah, maybe secure data or something like that, that you want to say, okay, like a Snapchat functionality or something like that, is that, okay, it's, it's gone after a certain time. Um, I think with that, um, we can go to the questions if they are there, so don't hesitate yeah. to ask them. Robert, if you want to quickly actually just um, stop sharing your screen, that way people can you know, see you on the full screen. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, uh, pause sharing, I think. Yeah, let's pause sharing. Pause sharing. Yeah. Okay, can I do that? Yeah. And I'll then stop we sharing. Sh stop, stop sharing. sharing. Okay, yeah. we can see ya. So, um, Robert, do you you got quite a few questions, and I also received some questions via chat as well. But do you see okay. the little Q and A box kind of at the yeah. bottom of the Zoom? Click into yeah, there. Yeah, I see yeah. four questions. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, can you share a link to the blog on reason four? Yeah, that's the one from Zeno's tech. I think you mean, um, answer live, right? Can I do that? Uh, or not type answer. Yeah. No. Uh, I answered that one. Okay. okay. Uh, also, it's also a different one. Does TTL override messages retention setting then? Um, yeah, the TTL is a special function. And so if you have like, um, I think you can do it even per message that you publish. So the retention time is topic based where time to live is message based. Um, okay. Uh, you ask the spoil the message post priority as well. Does Pulsa support the message priority as well? Priority, ah, that's something from queuing. So you have like, the quality of service, it's still, the priority is still based on, um, I don't know if you mean it with cons consumption, but look, um, it's still a, a sequential log. So you have still a, an index that you read from. So, so um, with that, I don't know the concept of priority is how, how you would like um, see that with, with CQRS or something like that, because there is, so, uh, Robert, I do see a couple questions that came in via the chat. If it's okay, I'll just read yeah. them out loud. Um, yeah. Have a question here. What is the difference between bookkeeper and zookeeper? In Kafka world, zookeeper is aimed for persistence replication among all brokers. Well, in future, zookeeper will not be mandatory. We will see what it means in practical terms when available. Is the purpose of zookeeper in Pulsar world same as in Kafka? That was for uh, you. Yes, it's the same, the same product, right? And uh, yep. here, of course, this, it, it's still for the distribution of, of the, 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 yeah, for the synchronization 
of things. Uh, I think right to zookeeper. Uh, it, it's it's the same it's the same one as using Kafka, but it it does also it doesn't hold state. I think where the question is. Uh, yeah, the person says uh, they're used to Spark. Yeah, it's 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 yes, it is for replication, uh, but not the replication to the broker. It's the replication to um, bookkeeper. Will be in future zookeeper will not be mandatory. Uh, yeah, I don't know this question. No, I'm sorry, I don't know <laughs> this uh, this answer. No, no. Well, Robert, you sure do know a ton. You shared such great, awesome content today, um, folks. Before we wrap up here, if you want to. Just drop some additional cues in the Q&A. Robert can see those. I'll yeah. give it another two or three minutes here. Robert, I thought that the thunderstorm was just special effects in your Prezzo. I thought, you know, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, there, were, there was one slide where, where something, uh, something was like in the background. Oh, hey, I clicked two on the left side, but already <laughs> I always try to, like, if, if some content is not important anymore. And certainly with where there's a lot of stuff on these slides, the comparison is to how, yeah, more make the other one transparent. Ah, so another question just came in. Thank you, folks. Yep. How to update persistent state inside of the function. So you, in a function, you get the, the message, right? And, uh, and you have like, um, so if you use the SDK, you have two things. You have the message that's coming in into the function, which is usually the command. And then uh, you have the data already in the context where you can read the state data. So this is something you program like in the function. If you build it with Java or Python, you can use like the, the objects you have there to, to manipulate the data and then uh, write it. Uh, yeah, write it with, with the SDK. TK functions write it um, to the new topic, uh, stuff like that. So I would rather say this is something really very well documented in the in the SDK documentation of of, of the functions. Um, if you uh, go to the non the native ones, you don't have that. So you only you can only receive the the messages. You can't state you can't uh, change the state. That you need to really program with the uh, yeah. Um, uh, what you want to do with your own system or something? Maybe usually you can 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 just retrieve it in in an application, but usually it's not maybe for for returning it to a different topic. Um, or yeah, you need to use a comp combination, which it's not easy to do something state changes uh, if you don't use the SDK. So, uh, but if you use the SDK, it, yeah, and in Java and Python you can just. Yeah, program it as a, if, you, if you would do a normal uh, normal method in Java or Python with the data changes. So Robert, before we wrap here, a question for you, um, not seeing any other Q&As. If folks just love this presentation, which I know I did, where can they go to connect with you? What's the Twitter? What's the website? What are some books? Feel free to drop yeah, those. So, yeah, uh, so for Twitter, that's my main thing. I'm almost uh, at, at uh, I think, more than a thousand followers right now. Oh, so OK. I think a few left, so it will be nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I share content um, not only on this, but um, also on blockchain, IoT, uh, those things. Um, so that's Robert van Molken uh, on Twitter. Then for the books, um, if you search on also my name on Amazon, or you can do it on Pep Publishing or uh, Safari Books. From Owani is that you uh, can find um, both a blockchain across Oracle and uh, the uh, one on the, more on the, the this on integration platform as a service book. This more if you want to do uh, that kind of integrations. But uh, and um, I have my own uh, personal uh, blog that's uh, te uh, technology uh, dot uh, .nl. Uh, and um, yeah, that's also. Um, mostly these kind of topics that you can find there. Awesome. Well, Robert, you um, finished us out beautifully for today. Uh, you are our last presenter for today. So I just want to say, let me just quickly stop recording here. And then uh, before I do that, let me go ahead and do a clap clap for you because that was awesome.